Good evening, folks, and welcome to the June 4th, 2013 meeting of the Iredell County Board of Commissioners. At this point, join us in our invocation, please. Heavenly Father, again, we, we come to you confessing our need of wisdom and confessing our sins and asking your pardon and asking that you would give us wisdom. We pray that uh, as we go through these proceedings tonight that uh, this practice of self-government is a, is a blessing that you've given us and help us to understand that if we are to govern ourselves collectively, we must first know how to govern ourselves internally. And I pray, pray tonight as we go through these proceedings that everyone will speak respectfully and will be considerate of each, each other's points of view that we'll take those considerations into our mind and we'll ponder them carefully. We ask for the wisdom to do this, and we praise you for it in advance. And we ask it in your name, for your sake. Amen. 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 Join us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of our country. Mr. Smith, are there any adjustments of this agenda coming from the staff this evening? Mr. Chairman, we have one adjustment. I'd like to add item D under administrative matters, and this is a proclamation recognizing the achievements of Judge Robert A. Collier, Jr. Okay. Is that all you have, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Are there any adjustments of this agenda coming from any member of the board? If not, the floor is open for a motion for adoption of this agenda. I move we approve the agenda as amended. Okay. Motion comes from Commissioner Boone for adoption of this agenda as amended. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. We have uh, no presentation of special recognitions and awards this evening. No appointments before the board that I'm aware of. We'll move, move immediately to our public hearings. At this point, uh, I believe, is Mr. Carney here? Has anyone seen him? I did not see him come in. Okay. All right. We'll declare this meeting, we'll declare this meeting to be in a public hearing in consideration of an economic development incentive for Project Coffee. And in the absence of uh, Mr. Carney, I'm going to let our... Mr. Chairman, uh, Gene just informed me that he does want this deleted from okay. the agenda. Okay, I apologize. I apologize. Well, I would move that we delete this item and we close the public hearing. <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. That brings us to the consideration of the proposed fiscal year 2013-2014 Iredell County budget. And as a matter of uh, courtesy, I will extend uh, Commissioner Robertson's apology for his absence this evening. He was called away on business to Canada and could not return in time for this meeting. And he offered to ask me to apologize on his behalf. And before we go into public hearing, I want to make a couple of comments. There are 27 people who have signed up this meeting this evening. And if that, if, the, if we adhere to our rules, that is five minutes per so that's a pretty good while. We are not going to deny anybody who wishes to speak the opportunity to speak, but I'm going to ask that as much as practical, limit your remarks to five minutes per person. Now, I want to say this. No one is going to be interrupted during their comments. They're going to speak at their leisure, and they're going to get their point across. At the conclusion of the public hearing, if there's any county commissioner who wishes to speak in regards to some of the concerns 
addressed here or concerns in regard to other matters concerning this county budget, they will be afforded the opportunity to do so. Now, once those commissioners have, been, have begun to speak, they will not be interrupted tonight as they were in the previous meeting. They will not be shouted down. The chairman is not going to indulge that tonight. I've asked for two deputies to be here. If I have to go to the gavel, that is a signal for the deputies to move up toward the front of the room, and you will be given one verbal warning. Should you choose not to heed that verbal warning, you will be asked to leave. So I'm, trying, I'm a really nice guy, but we're not going to put up with that. That's no place in public discourse. Okay? So don't make me do what I don't want to do. Okay? So at this time, we'll call the meeting in the public hearing in consideration of the proposed fiscal year budget 2013-2014. And the first person who wishes to speak this evening is Beth Packman. And after her is Scott Klontz, Cass Carbo. If those, if Mr. Klontz and Ms. Carbo would go ahead and begin to move toward the, the front here. And if you would, before you begin your remarks, state your name for the record, please. My name is Elizabeth Ann Packman. And I thank you for the opportunity to speak this evening and thank you for your service to our community. I am the PTSO president at Mount Warren School in Mooresville. I am also the wife of Dr. John Packman, who is a dentist here in Statesville. I tell you that so that you understand the perspective that I'm coming from. I'm not only a concerned parent, but I am a resident and a property owner in this county, as well as a small business owner. In the last eight years, my children have attended Iredale Statesville Schools. My husband and I have been very pleased with the education that they've received. The schools are not perfect by any means, but they have done a great job for our children. We have an academically gifted daughter who has been challenged and, and is having this wonderful love for learning. And we also, on the opposite end, have a child with a learning disability who is making great strides. In the last six years, I have given back to the schools by participating on the school improvement teams and the PTSO boards. I have a growing concern for the long-term strength of our schools and their ability to give our children the best education possible. I have watched as we have asked teachers over those past eight years to, and their administrators to do more with less and less resources. For instance, Mount Morn is a fabulous new school choice. In the last four years, they have functioned without math textbooks or science textbooks. There is two sets of integrated math eight, le, le, integrated math one for eighth grade graders. Those are the only textbooks we have in this fabulous new school of choice. Those teachers are pulling things from the internet and begging and borrowing from other teachers in the county to get the materials and the resources that they need to teach those children. There are over a hundred highly qualified rising sixth graders who can't even get into the program because we physically don't have room. The Friday before Memorial Day, our humanities teachers had to grade 570 common core exams that now come from the state. Each of them had an essay question, an open-ended essay question. Many of our responses were over three pages long from our students. They had to grade all of those tests in less than 24 hours. Our school district is the 107th lowest funded out of 115 in the state, and that concerns me. As a business owner, I'm concerned about the long-term growth of this community without a strong school system. I know budgets are difficult, and many, many people are asking you for money. And times here in this county are still tight. My husband sees that on a daily basis in his business. I don't want, 
I will know that you all don't want to be the bad guys, which is why I'm asking you to let the residents of this county vote on a sales tax increase. Have we done all that we can possibly do for our children, for our future of this county, and the future of our children? Thank you for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Chairman Johnson, uh, members of the board, members of the public, teachers. Dr. Packman's my son's dentist. It's not funny. We're all intertwined. I was in Colorado two weeks ago, ran into a boy from NC State, his intern. He's a friend of Nicholas Sparks' oldest son that I've flown around. So we're all interconnected. So I appreciate Dr. Packman's service to my children. Uh, for those of you who can't read it on this side, it will be a great day when the schools have all the money they need and the Air Force has to hold a bake sale to buy bombers. My stake in this is uh, I have a sixth grader at IB. Um, I've observed uh, school board operations for the last six years. I was one person out of 160,000 residents that showed up last night for four and a half hours while they met. UTAs want to keep your jobs. You need to show up at school board meetings. Um, my stake is, is that I looked at my proper tax bill, it was $1,300. I've got a bank statement right here that shows that I wrote a check for $500 to send a school, school child to a national convention. I've given motel rooms. I've got a checkbook right here that if I don't blow a gasket, I might write another $500. I asked these commissioners last year, double my taxes if you're going to give it to the classrooms. Here's the facts, folks. Analysis will show that Iredell County funds public education in the state 57th, not 107th. Iredell County funds at 57th in the median. Want to raise taxes? We might be number one. The funding discrepancy to place both Iredell County LEAs, education authorities, in the 107-108 position statewide is a lack of equality in funding at the state level. You people are in the wrong room. All students in North Carolina are not funded on the same base amount. Economically successful counties, counties that Dr. Packman do business in, counties that Dr. Uh, Mr. Johnson do business in, are penalized financially through a state public education funding formula. The citizens of Iredell County are asked to make up the shortfall to gain funding equality. This is the North Carolina state funding for the Department of Instru Public Instruction. The B is in the billion. In 2012-13, the number audited certified on the department uh, budget management was $7.5 billion. The 13-14 Senate approved last week was $7.8 billion. I can't do math very quick because I went to Iowa schools. About $340,000. 2014-15, eight billion billion. The governor said $7.899. That's almost $7.9 billion. That's almost $400 million more than last year. And the governor also said, we'll take it to 8.1 in 2014-15. And our school administrators are telling us their cuts. Their cuts are that the state said the school system had to determine where to spend the money. If they want to spend a million dollars to employ 40 more TAs, that's 0.57% of the budget, $175 million in this county. These are the numbers of record increases, state funding increased in our state school schools, 11%. Federal funding increased 36. There's an anomaly in 2009, thanks to Obama. Local funding increased 18%. Student population increased 10%. These numbers are available. I don't want to bore you with them. I got more things to say. Education spending in Idle has increased. 2009 was a spectacular year for federal money. These guys have a problem. They got two school systems in this county to fund. Got two superintendents. One of them is paid 173,000 when the state says he's worth 128. One of them makes 153,000 when the state says he's worth 120 plus his PhD and I respect him for having that. If you estimate 25,000 students in the, in in this county, Mooresville and Iredell Statesville, we spend $12 a student just on superintendents. 
Dr. Heath Marston makes two eighty-eight plus a little bit here and there for country club fees. That's two dollars and fifteen cents a student. These guys got a problem. They got two systems. They got dual support staffs. They got assistant superintendents. They got human resources facility staff. They're not laying any of them off. Race to the top is going to net twenty million dollars or more of federal money in this state, in this uh, idle state school system. Technology director Pam Schiffman, the last year she worked, got a thirty-nine thousand dollar pay increase. That's numbers I got from the office here in Statesville. This position was so important that the county system decided to, do the, to pay the leading candidate for Schiffman, Schiffman replacement was offered $80,000, almost $70,000 less. And the candidate that took the job is currently paid $91,000. But yet the newspaper says that we're going to wait about a year to implement this program. Well, what was Pam doing in 2012? Shouldn't she have had that plan in place? Human resources, there's 11 employees, 541,000 estimated based on the record and landmarks numbers. Three of these employees net a total of 300,000. We replaced one of them last year. We're not going to replace any TAs when they get rid of them. Why did we replace that one? Richard Armstrong makes 116,000. He made that when he was principal at West Idol. He moved into the central office. We moved Dr. Holden back to West Idol. We kept Dr. Holden at 99. That's wrong. Forty assistant teacher's assistants are $1 million. That's $25,000 per employee. What's the value of leadership? And then this is a key. Non-race street and ADR employees have little input on the operating budget of the system. School bus travels 40 minutes out of the way in the, in the Cool Springs district to pick up one student. That's leadership. You guys need to go to Raleigh. You don't need to be in Statesville. Good evening, commissioners and staff. Uh, it's a pleasure to be able to address you tonight. It's one of the great things about living in America. You know, there's been times in my life when I thought I had a tiger by the tail. But uh, I think you definitely do. This is uh, a very complex and... Uh, Dif difficult county to administer and to do it in a way where your constituents are satisfied with the way you did business. I'm here tonight to talk about education. That seems to be the hot issue this month, last month, and it will be next month. I am a property owner in Iredell County, but more importantly, I have two children in the ISS system. I have a boy that has just completed his second year at VPAC, which is the early college program that's based here in Statesville at the high school. And I have a boy that is just completing second grade, Lake Shore Elementary. I have seen the school budgets suffer I have seen the teachers in the classroom suffer. And if you are to believe what you read in the newspaper, it only looks like it's going to get worse. My concern is this. Is my eight-year-old boy going to have less opportunities when he gets to high school than his older brother did? And is that right? I would hope that the answer is no, that we will figure out a way to improve the education funding. We will figure out a way to put our children first. Because as a speaker said at your last meeting, there's no doubt that you are all very intelligent individuals. You, at least we the voters, trusted that that was the case when we elected you. But I, for one, would like the generation that follows in your footsteps and the generation that follows after that to be even better educated and more intelligent 
because the comp problems are going to be more complex than even what you face here today. And you have an opportunity, because of your pos position, because of your influence, to take the steps that will improve education in this county. I ask that you honor the request to let the voters decide. I further request that you throw your support behind that, that you come out publicly and say, this is what we want to do for our children in this county. We want to make it one of the best because for us, an item like this on the ballot to have the best opportunity to pass, it needs the commissioner's support. And I fervently hope that you will determine that it's in the best interest of all of the people in Iredell County to have a strong education system. I'd also ask that you use your influence to foster a spirit of cooperation between not only yourselves, but the Iredell School System Board and the Mooresville Graded Board, and in some way get public meetings where everybody speaks together in a friendly way and resolves issue in, is re, excuse me resolves issues and plans the improvement f for education in a way that it's not a big deal when it comes to budget time that you don't have to be faced with angry constituents that's my request for you here tonight thank you for the opportunity to address you and i fervently hope you will listen to what I've said. Thank you. Next is Claire Pirat. Next is James Hogan. And then Bill Booker. Those folks who begin to come forward, please. Good evening. My name is Claire P. Ratt. I have two children that go to Cottle Creek Elementary. One is in fifth grade and one is um, in second grade. And I'm here tonight, uh, as the other folks, to ask you to please put the sales tax to a vote. I think it's the fair thing to do for this county. And I, to the gentleman that spoke earlier, I have been in Raleigh. I fought very hard to get our um, Congress people to not sunset the sales tax, the penny sales tax. And ultimately, they have put us in the position we are in today. And I'm sorry for that because you folks are having to take the slack for it and possibly make up the difference. We are the lowest funded county, and year after year, it seems we're here begging you for money. If you put it to a vote and you ask the community if they are for an increase in sales tax, we might not have to visit each other next year. We might actually have enough funding so that our schools don't have to go without TAs and textbooks and other types of technology. My school specifically raised $26,000 this year to put a smart board in every classroom. We can't fundraise to pay for positions. We're, we're at our limit. This state establishes a statewide standard which requires sufficient funding for a system of public schools. And to me, this means more than just keeping the lights on and the doors open. This means sufficient funding. At our current position, we are not in sufficient funding. I realize that it's the state's responsibility to do this funding, but they're shirking their responsibilities at this point. And we need leaders that are willing to step out of the box and take a chance and fill in the gaps for our children. There's no one else to do it. I also understand that a new jail is being proposed in Mooresville, and this hasn't been brought up or in the county. Um, I understand this is going to be a $25 million project. My request, I understand the jail is full and it's overcrowded and I completely, that's, that's reasonable that a new jail needs to be built. I would ask you to include education as a component of the study this summer. Find out where those inmates grew up, where they went to school, if those schools were underfunded and if the schools had appropriate teachers with appropriate salaries working for them. 
I think you'll find a direct correlation between the prisoners and the unfunded schools. We also need to work together as a community. People ask me all the time why I attend these meetings, why I even bother, because they've said you have your minds made up. I would hate to believe that's true. The reason I care is because I plan to live in Iredell County for a long time, and an educated student is more likely to be putting back into my community instead of committing crimes in my community. Thank you for your time. Good evening. My name is uh, James Hogan. Uh, i lived in Iredell County now for 22 years, and I'm a graduate of the Iredell Statesville School Systems. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to you tonight. I currently uh, do not work in the Iredell County School System, although I did at one point. I now work at a small private liberal arts college just to the south of Iredell County, one that costs about $53,000 a year to attend. One is one of the top 10 liberal arts colleges in America. And I'm part of a fundraising team that's uh, raised just over $72 million this year in support of higher education at Davidson College. So I know how it is to try and raise money in a tough environment, to try and put together all the resources that you can to fund a quality education. Now, before I go into the notes I've prepared tonight, I think it is worth mentioning a few numbers. In 2008 and 2009, the state of North Carolina provided approximately $110 million to Iredell Statesville Schools. In 2011-12, that number was $103 million, which my North Iredell education tells me is $7 million less. In 2008 and 9, the county government provided $38.9 million to Iredell Statesville Schools. In 2011-12, that number was 32.3, a difference of six. $6.6 million, again, less. Now, look, I came here tonight to talk to you about opportunity. At the end of this long and contentious discussion about education and finances and taxes, all of any of us wants is an opportunity. I know that the mess that we're in these days isn't your fault. I feel like Robin Williams in Goodwill Hunting telling you, it's not your fault. I know that the State House and the Senate are hacking away at education funding, and they're doing that because of health care costs, which isn't the state's fault, but a federal problem. It's not your fault. I know. But we're still here today, all of us, thinking about opportunity. I think our best opportunity comes in creating a community that has a place for everyone, a place where there's dignity in every job, where our citizens have the education that they need, where it doesn't matter if you're a day trader or a night watchman, because our community prepared you through a quality public education. The reason we invest in public education is to shine the gospel light of knowledge and wisdom upon the children of this community. This is the truest and most sacred thread of democratic society, that your race or your gender or your socioeconomic status or your neighborhood that you live in does not dictate the quality education and the opportunities that it affords. Because our community has ensured that access, that access to an education is never in question. Now, when the school fiscal year begins anew on July 1, that opportunity could diminish. As the county board of commissioners, you have the chance to save not only 40 jobs in Iredell Statesville schools, but you have the opportunity to help create countless more opportunities in the future through funding quality education. What we need from you now is to quit the rhetoric of it's not our fault and take on the rhetoric of this is our responsibility. Because that's why we're here tonight. That's why every person in this room in support of public education is here. We're here because it's our community's responsibility 
to ensure that people, that children have more help in their classrooms when they are young and tender and impressionable, to ensure that our hardworking teachers' assistants don't have to worry about joining the unemployment line, to ensure that our facilities are safe and adequate to protect the opportunity of thousands of school children among us. We're not here because this is a federal or a state or a county problem. We're here because we intend to act, to seize this opportunity, to vote with our feet, and to let you know that we are willing to do whatever it takes. But we can't do it without you. We need your help, Marvin and Steve and David. We need your help. Today is your opportunity. Help us keep that opportunity alive at least one more day. Thank you. Leon Prigden, I don't know if I'm just calling your name earlier. If I did, I apologize. Mr. Prigden's going to be followed by Bill Booker and Melissa Tobias. Well, uh, first I'd like to say thank you for the opportunity to speak to you. Um, thank you for listening, County Commissioners. I, it is an honor to be here, and I'll be honest, I am not prepared tonight. But I do want to say that one thing that we are asking as citizens, my children have gone to our, well, they were not part of our social schools. My wife graduated from our social schools. My son and my daughter have both graduated from Mooresville Grade School District. They have had a wonderful, wonderful experience there in that particular school district. There are great things that they've done. But the, over the last four years, we have not seen any increase in our teacher salaries, and they've done more with less. Every day there is a demand on them, on their time, and they give everything that they have in an effort to provide a quality education for children. As we move forward, we see that every year, every time we look at budgets, every time we come forward, we come forward with less. There's less opportunity to provide for these children. The only thing that the people, the citizens of this county is asking is for an opportunity for us to have a voice heard to be able to say on a ballot whether or not we want to, to support our children, whether we want to support a tax or a bond, or we want to make sure that our children have quality education, a quality place to go. And all we're asking is for the opportunity for the folks here in Iredell County to have their voice heard and make that decision. We need your support to be able to do that. Thank you. Melissa Tobias. Hi, my name is Melissa Tobias and I am about to be a junior at Mooresville High School. I want to take this opportunity to talk about the students that go to the Mooresville schools and how the crumbling walls and following bricks affect us. You see, the fine arts and athletics is an amazing escape for children and teenagers. It allows us to forget about our problems while we dribble the basketball, do the leap, or play and sing the melodies. It gives us a break. The arts and athletics are our coping tools, especially for me. I had problems. At 12 and a half, I was depressed. At 13, I was suicidal. At 13 and a half, I was in a hospital after a near successful suicide attempt. I was hospitalized again at 14 and a half, but this time it wasn't for a direct suicide attempt. It was because I asked for help and I was going to get it. There are only a few things that are stronger than sadness, and one of those is passion. My passion was and is music, and it's one of the key things that made me decide to get the help that keeps me going. Mr. and Mrs. Davis and Mr. White and the brand program remind me every day that life is worth living and that I will live to pursue my passion. You may think that this is all silly because a 12-year-old with depression, but depression is a flaw in chemistry, not character. It was in my genes, just like brown eyes may be in yours. I couldn't help it, but music could help me. 
Since I decided to get help, my entire life has flipped around. I have learned many instruments, including oboe, English horn, mellophone, mallet and percussive instruments, saxophone, ukulele, flute, and clarinet. I was also nominated to go to governor's school this summer on oboe, and I have passed all the tests and auditions to do so. In addition to music-related things, I have written and published a book and gained confidence and self-esteem. I know I'm just one person, but look around. I'm not the only one that has struggled in my life and been saved by my passion. I can almost guarantee you that just about everyone in the crowd that has dealt with a traumatic event, mental disorder, or something that knocked them down, their passion has helped them stand back up. Art, choir, sports, dance, music, and everything else is more important than it seems at the surface. They are foundations of life and happiness. Now, let me ask you. What happens 10 years from now when the gym, auditorium, and band room in Magnolia building are no longer in use because it's unsafe? How are those kids going to cope with their problems when they haven't learned what their passion is? How are they going to learn how to deal with a rough day when they don't have a safe place to go? The band room is my safe place because I'm surrounded by loved ones who care about me for who I am and won't even think about hurting me, and I'm not the only one who feels this way. I promise you. You can look out into the crowd at the other band students and students in this school, and they will tell you the same thing. Music and art and dance, choir, sports have helped them get through the tough times. But really, where are those kids going to go? Who are they going to turn to? These programs have helped so many people already and saved lives. Please just consider letting us vote to get the funds to fix up the schools and improve our community, not only for ourselves, but for the future generations. Thank you. Next is Mr. Rob Heights, followed by Mac Murray and Troy Holmesley. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. It's nice to be here again. Well, it's budget time, and I had to ask somebody for a tax increase. I, it's just in my blood. <laughs> I want to speak in praise of our county school system and the fine job that our teachers are doing to prepare our young people for a future in technology in a challenging age. Teachers work with youth from varying backgrounds and nationalities, teach them to speak and comprehend our language, solve complex, complex math, operate computers and educate them so that they have a chance to live a decent middle-class life. I have a child at Northview IB and another at Cloverleaf. These schools have given my sons an incredible amount of background in information technology, science, and the liberal arts. At the IB school, my eighth graders already had three years of foreign language, algebra and geometry, and a broad understanding of the complex nature of the world in which we live. We look forward to our youngest son attending Northview in the fall. Working in the business community, the folks at ISS have developed an incredible economic development tool, one that offers technical education for some, college preparation for others, and an environment where kids feel welcomed and not discouraged. Our schools and technical college get high marks from our industrial prospects when they evaluate our community as a place to locate or expand business. Sadly, our state legislature has taken away many of the resources that the counties depended on to further make progress in our schools. Cutting spending at the state level only causes it to be passed to the counties. So the funding burden falls increasingly on you, the commissioners. I pay $772 a year in county taxes, 332 of which goes to the schools. In my view, my kids are getting an amazing education for $332 in the county taxes. That, Mr. Chairman, is a bargain. So tonight I'm here to ask you that you permit a quarter cent sales tax to be placed on the ballot so that our residents can continue to fund our schools at the rate 
that can ensure their continued excellence. I estimate that this will cost my family at most $5 a month. Again, an incredible bargain. Please consider what this small tax increase will do to help maintain the best school system in the Charlotte metropolitan area. For me, this is a small price to pay for the kind of education that's kept my family in Iredell County. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Mac Murray, is he here? <coughs> Troy Holmesley? Good to see you all tonight. I'm sorry to see Miss uh, Griffith couldn't make it. Once again, the halls of this chamber are filled to the brim. And once again, people have come to show their overwhelming support for a school bond referendum in Iredell County to improve the infrastructure in, of the buildings where the children of this county are given the tools that they will need in a world that is in much need of scientists, writers, activists, teachers, humanists, and thinkers. As a product of the Mooresville Graded School District, I can tell you that the education I received at Mooresville is uh, something I'll cherish my entire life. Today I stand in front of you because I believe that every single child deserves the same opportunities that I was afforded as a student. I believe that every child deserves the respect of knowing that the walls surrounding them are safe, that the gym floor they practice on is durable, and that the auditorium they enter is as strong as the teachers who teach them. I believe that the teachers of these schools deserve the decency of being paid fairly for the challenging and also important work that they do. I believe that the teaching assistants who wake up at 5 a.m. to drive our children to school and spend the rest of the day assisting teachers and then driving these children back to their homes deserve some semblance of job security. I believe we owe these things as a society, as a government, as a people. We owe these things to our children and to our teachers and to ourselves. It's easy to place blame for budget cuts in various directions. Some blame the federal government, some blame wasteful programs, some blame teachers who they believe get paid unfair salaries or superintendents who they believe get paid unfair salaries. Some blame the Affordable Care Act. I, for one, blame the series of futile and violent wars we've become entangled in since the early 2000s. But the fact is this isn't really about finding someone to blame. This is about the choice we have in front of us right here and right now to take matters into our own hands. This is about an opportunity, a moment in time, when we have the chance to let a local group of people go to the polls in the most democratic and American of ways to vocalize and make manifest their support of public free education. We have a saying at Morrisville Graded School District, it says every child every day. Yesterday, today, tomorrow, every single child is given the attention, education, and care that they need to succeed in a world that is much bigger than they know. And today, we are here to ensure that we can fulfill our promise, our contract, our duty to the generation that want, might one day fill these very seats, or if we fail, otherwise dismantle them. Thank you. Next we have Mr. Cliff Holmesley. He's followed by James Settlemeyer. And he's followed by Bonnie Sue Tobias. If those folks would begin to move toward the front, please. Uh, commissioners, I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you tonight. And, uh, it is difficult to follow my son. Uh, he's uh, uh, quite on his way to some great accomplishments. And also, Mr. Hodge, I want you for my lawyer. All right. This gentleman from Davidson College, that was quite, uh, that was quite a talk, and I think he really hit everything that we needed to hear tonight, so I'm not going to go into a whole lot. 
But what I would like to say is I appreciate the efforts of this board under the leadership of Mr. Johnson for a number of years to be very responsible with the taxpayers' dollars in this county. I think that Mr. Johnson has always paid a lot of attention to making sure that our tax dollars are wisely spent. And he's led this board for a number of years, or been on this board for a number of years. Mr. Boone's been on the board off and on over the years. Mr. Norman, of course, for a number of years. And what this board has done is it's made it its mission to make this government accountable to the people of this county. And by doing that, you've put us in a position where our tax rate is one of the lowest tax rates in the state of North Carolina. Well, what you've also done is created an opportunity. Because we have such a low tax rate, you have the flexibility to do some things. These folks who run these schools have operated on the lowest funding, virtually the lowest funding in the state of North Carolina. You know the figures, and we've heard it's not necessarily your fault. Maybe there's inequity in Raleigh, but we're faced with that. Think about this. They're operating on the lowest funding in North Carolina, and I think we heard last time we were here that North Carolina funds its schools less than any state in the country besides Mississippi. <laughs> Now, I don't know anybody from Mississippi, and I don't want to offend anybody from Mississippi, but when I hear the word Mississippi, and I hear that I'm just barely in front of Mississippi, that hurts. That hurts. Now, what made North Carolina a great state, and what made North Carolina a lot different from the rest of the southern United States was our willingness to support public education, our willingness to integrate our schools without incident, our willingness to do what it, what it took to give an equal education to all, regardless of their wealth or their income or who their daddy knew. And that's what they're doing here in Mooresville, and that's what they're doing in our Statesville. And you know what? We pay some of these people a lot of money. Well, you know what happens as a result of that? National Superintendent of the Year for Dr. Edwards. <laughs> Ardell Statesville Schools gets a $20 million grant. That's called getting bang for your buck. And that's right, you got to pay for leadership. I want to give a shout out to those teaching assistants that spoke last time at this meeting. I, I have never heard such eloquent speeches and really bringing home the point of the necessity of having teaching assistants in our systems, in both of our systems. <laughs> to get back to my original point, because you have made such efforts over the years as a board, such great efforts to hold our county fiscally accountable, you have created a flexibility where you can leave this room after you vote on this budget. And I'm not up here trying to pick little pennies up off the floor. What I'm asking this board to do is to raise the property tax rate. We don't need an election to do that. You can do that next week when you vote on this budget. And what you can say to the citizens of this county is I've saved you so much money over the years that we can afford to do this, and that education is a priority in our county. And you can hold your head high as you walk among the people who might question you about that. And you can say, you know what? Well, maybe we got the 65th lowest tax rate in North Carolina instead of the 85th lowest. But doggone it, we're going to support those schools and we're going to support the mission of what they're doing. When it comes to economic development, why does a chamber of commerce composed of a bunch of people who pay taxes vote to endorse a bond? Because it's good for business and it's good for Ardell County. Thank you. Mr. Saddlemeyer. 
My name is James Selmar, sir, and I'm here in response to the taxpayers in this community. I live here in town, and I am forced to pay double taxes, city and county. I don't know if all y'all get to do that or not. I mean, God be blessed. But now, this thing, I've got some articles out of the paper I'd like to bring y'all's attention. Idle senior population groups. 29% of Idle's age 60 plus population lives in poverty. So I know they want y'all to pass another 4, 5, 6, 8, 10%, whatever you need to take care of these people. Pretty sure they'd love to pay it. Next thing I gotta say here, this thing, the Board of Education wants to raise a quarter cent sales tax, which I greatly think they ought to be able to do. But when they say it, it raises $4.3 million to be spent at their discretion, I think that's a joke. All I hear you people talking about is you need supplies for your kids and stuff. Let's raise this tax. But none of it can be used for salaries, new teachers, nothing. All it can be used for is for the kids. Next thing here, says board members, that's Board of Education, first made the decision to not extend the one-time 1% 1 increase in the local salary supplement for employees. The same measure had been passed in the fall with money paid out in November. The bonus which would have given the average teacher about extra $200 at the end of the year comes at a cost of $501,600. Now, these people's holding about $8 million of somebody's money. I think it's called taxpayers. But you teachers, they decided y'all don't deserve a raise. Don't deserve no supplement because it's got to come out of their savings. I mean, that's real nice right there in the paper. Next thing, plant closes in July. Tube tech's closing down right down the street. 101 families is going to lose an income. And I'm sure they would appreciate y'all raising their tax, whatever it takes to make you teachers happy. They're going to be out of a job. Y'all got security. You got all kinds of benefits, insurance. These people ain't going to have nothing. Next month, July. Here, the city of council. I live in the city. They're fixing to raise our power rates 5.5%. They're going to raise our sewage rates 2%, even though this sewage plant they're building ain't going to be in effect for two and a half more years. But yet they're going to raise it. Now, you got here and tell these people living on Social Security, I'm a little bit better off than some of these people, that they're going to take another 5% for this, 2% for that. You teachers think y'all need another 4 or 5%. Tell these people that's living in poverty what that's going to do for them. You won't take away their insurance, food, medicine, because y'all think we work for the county, we are deserving people, them people's got a right to live too. I don't know how y'all people think that they need so much money for schools. Now, per Mr. Boone up here, Arlo County has the 10th highest per capita debt service of the 100 counties in the state. About one out of every four dollars we pay is for principal and interest. About 80% of that debt was incurred by the commissioners. Only 20% was approved by the voters. So every dollar you people pay taxes, 25% is going to pay interest on our debt, which I know that don't make no difference to y'all. And the next thing I'd like to bring to your attention, Bill aims to revive basics of cursive mathematics. Per Miss Melanie Taylor, the way we communicate as a society is changing. Most of our communication is done electronically, whereas 30 years ago, most was done by our handwriting. There's a bill coming up. It leads to ensure that students leave elementary school well adversed in the basic principles of math, reading, and writing. And proponents say too many children need remedial classes after later in life because they're not getting the education they need because of all this high-dollar electronic crap they're trying to teach the people. <laughs> and here it says ISS employs 37 teachers above what the state pays for. Plus, it added several more positions to make a total of 57 jobs that they want the taxpayers to fund at a cost of $3.3 million. So right now, if the schools had 
the amount of teachers the state assigned them, you'd have three more million dollars all teachers could get a raise with. And the last thing I want to say is one that really griped my butt. Our teachers need taxpayer support. And I'll be done in a second. Here's the thing for Miss Cheryl Stiers, a teacher at North Dartle High School. If you want to, I went online and kind of find out what she's got. But here, it says, I'm not suggesting we throw money at education with no accountability, but realistically speaking, sometimes you get what you pay for. If that's the attitude that the teachers has got, y'all don't deserve nothing. If I've got to pay you for what you're going to teach the kids, and then you tell me they need to learn how to read and write, I, I, that's, <clears throat> everybody needs a new computer. Excuse me, Doc. Thank you for your time. I hate to run over. Fine. Uh, Bonnie Sue Tobias. Mr. Bass? Good evening. Good evening and thank you for the opportunity. Hold it down, folks. Mr. Bass, go ahead. Good evening and thank you for the opportunity to talk to all of you regarding funding for the Mooresville High School. My name is Bonnie Sue Tobias and I'm a very proud parent of two daughters, one at the Mooresville Middle School and one at the high school. Music is a very important part of our family. Both of my daughters are in the band programs and will be enrolled in choir next year in their respective schools. I can remember Melissa playing the drums on our kitchen floor with my pots and metal bowls. She liked playing in the kitchen best because the carpet in the family room didn't make the sound loud enough. As she has spoken to you earlier, music is her passion. She started playing the oboe in fifth grade when we lived in New Jersey. When we relocated in North Carolina in December of 2009, my husband took a position in Salisbury. It would have been great to, ha to have him have a 10 minute commute, but we were used to a very good school system and found that Mooresville had everything that we wanted for our girls and their education. When Melissa started in high school, she switched to alto sax for marching band and continues to play the oboe for concert band. In her sophomore year, she had another opportunity to play in the pit of the marching band playing the keyboard and the marimbas. Towards the end of the football season, Mooresville High School marching band was asked to play at the Shriners football game and one of the Davidson College's football games, and she played the mellophone there. Her talent amazes all of us and her ability to play many instruments. Her sister is following in her footsteps playing two instruments as you have heard, Melissa had gone through a very rough time and struggled with depression and an attempted suicide. Music is what kept her going and all the support that she and other kids get from music. Mr. and Mrs. Davis, Mr. White, and all the others involved in the music program at the high school. You see, when you are in the band, you have a whole new family. They all support each other and are a really fantastic group of kids. I am very proud to say that on June 16th, our family will be taking Melissa to Winston, North Carolina to attend Governor School for her talent, passion, and drive in playing the oboe. And it is not a very easy thing to get into either. She had to go through many different hurdles to get through and had to do a one-on-one -on -one audition. I am also very honored to be the chairperson of the Mooresville High School Pride in Motion Marching Band Blue Devil Classic. This is a very respected marching band competition where marching bands are judged on many different levels. We hosted our 31st Blue Devil Classic this past October. We had 23 different marching bands come from all over North Carolina, from South Carolina, and even Virginia. The event is an all-day event, and we had approximately 1,900 spectators come and enjoy a day of music and friendship. It takes many months to organize such a huge event and many parents, both current and past band members, plus the students run the Blue Devil Classic. We already have four bands registered for next year's. We have been very lucky with the weather and have been able to use the athletic stadium for it. 
I can only pray we continue our luck with the weather, as in some marching band competition, if it rains, the competitions are moved indoors to the school's gymnasiums. Our gymnasium would never hold that many people, nor be big enough or safe enough for the bands to perform. See, our students start working on marching band shows, learning how to march the show and music in July. The competitions that we have attended are in late September through October. The kids work extremely hard and have won many awards representing Mooresville High School and its directors and staff. Mooresville High School also has a lot of school spirit and we can't even have pep rallies because of the gymnasium size and the condition. Our band room is under the auditorium and the 2012 marching band had over 140 band members, not including the color guard. Rehearsals need to be outside, sometimes in very high heat, unless it rains due to the fact that we can not get the whole marching band in the band room. The percussion section needs to practice in the auditorium. This can make a very challenging rehearsal for the music if you can't hear all the instruments playing together. And it's not only the band room and the gymnasium that needs help, it's our auditorium too. Melissa, like many other kids, had low esteem and low confidence. This year, she had a role in the high school musical. The students worked very hard to put on a great show, and I can only hope that with a new auditorium, the sky would be unlimited to the shows, band, choir concerts that we could host for the entire community to enjoy. Mooresville Graded School District has also been in the spotlight like our advanced for an advanced technology that we offer all of our students. We have schools come and learn about our program and tour our facilities from all over the United States. We now have the President of the United States coming to the middle school this Thursday. Is he visiting the middle school and not the high school due to the poor conditions in our auditorium when throughout the school? It is sad to see the appearance of our buildings and the desperate needs for repair while we are so resourceful regarding technology. As you can see here tonight, it is not only parents here to support the referendum, but the students who attend our schools. They have come to learn about politics and will hopefully learn that in the future, voting does matter. If you have not had a chance to come to the Morsel High School yourself, I ask you to and see exactly what we are asking help with. All we want is for the people of this county to have a chance to vote yes or no to help our schools. Mooresville is a very exciting place to live and raise our children. In closing, I would like to say Mooresville High School Marching Band is known as Pride in Motion. Please help us continue to live up to those words. Help all of the students in our community be proud of our schools. Thank you. Next is Ms. Barbie Irvin. She's followed by Terry Wall and Lisa Gill. Evening, guys, and Miss Jean. Um, I'm Barbie Irvin. I'm a TA at Celeste Hinkle Elementary uh, and a glorified bus driver as well. Um, and I hate Ken's not here. I wanted to smile at him when I said that. But uh, it's a lot more to it than that. But I once again come to you on behalf of TAs in Iredell County and the students that we teach and we transport daily. And I'd like to let Mr. Klontz know that we do talk, to, we have a task force committee. Uh, the TAs has a task force committee that we do talk to uh, Mr. Johnson and some of the other members in central office. Um, and it would be good to have a lot more support, but we do that. Um, I know you've seen some of the articles that's been written and I just on the task and performance of TAs on any given day. And I'm just telling you, 
He didn't shed a light. I know it was a lot to, to cover, but that was just a mere glimpse of what TAs do daily. Um, out of the 36 schools in our county, 17 are elementary. And it's on that elementary level that we build a, an educational foundation and structure for our students to become role model citizens in the future. And anybody sitting here can tell you, if you build a house without a firm foundation, it, you're going to have problems. That's what we want to avoid. That's what we as TAs are valued here for. We're not just the bulletin board ladies or the running copy people. We teach. We teach in small groups. We teach. We are the teaching tools that our teachers use however they see necessary. Whether it's the high group, the medium group, the low group, we are their tools and we teach on the children's level what their needs have. Um, I have 11 grandchildren that one which is in high school here at West, one in West Middle, five currently in elementary from Celeste to Central, and four who will be coming forth. No way could I say one needs a better education than the other. No way. They're all just as equally as important. And I want each of them to equally be educated and have that ability to be educated. And I know, you know, we have our children and grandchildren who have these special needs that are in these small groups. It takes teachers and TAs to meet these needs, to, meet, to make sure these children's needs are met. And I understand that Ms. Uh, President Obama is coming in Iredell County to talk about education and jobs. And I just really have a little bit of a struggle when I think about that sounds great. I'm excited about it, but then I'm not excited about the situation here at hand because as my pastor, the late Tony Bunton, would always say, if there was people in our church, and I go to a small church, if there was ever a need, if somebody needed groceries or a light bill paid or whatever, he made the comment and he always said, the need is in the house. And I'm telling you today, we can meet the need in this county. We are that house that can meet that need. We've got to stop pitting against one another and start working together and thinking about our future, which is our children, guys. That's our children. And I'm sure Mr. Settlemeyer doesn't understand technology so well. We could surely train him. Because I believe everyone is teachable. Okay. I, I just have a passion about our kids, guys. I just have a passion. I know it's not me. It's not only me, but it's everybody that works in our education system. It is a passion. It's not just a job. It's a passion. We love what we do. You have to have a heart for it because God knows we're not in it for the money. I just want you to know, and I read the article that said if we all citizens gave a dollar extra a month, then we would be able to meet those needs. Well, I got you a $12 a month in advance check right there. <laughs> Good evening. 
My name is Terry Wall, and I am a teaching assistant at Cloverleaf Elementary. I have participated in the educations of the children of Mr. Klontz and Mr. Height. I do my job with children. One of the quotes that I teach my children is by a man named E.E. E. Cummings. And that quote says, it takes great courage to grow up and become who you really are. Being a teaching assistant is who I really am. I don't do my job because it fits my children's schedule and I like having time off in the summer. I do my job because I'm good at it. I teach children. Another quote that I teach my children is, check your coulda, woulda, shoulda at the door. <laughs> that means you do what you can while you're there. I invite you to do the same. I'm also a taxpayer in Idle County since 1976, and I attended Idle Statesville Schools. My family has lived in this county since shortly after the Revolutionary War. At a previous meeting, a comment was made regarding low attendance at an informational forums that were held prior to the election and at your meetings. I'd like for you to know that Idle Statesville Schools offered us the opportunity to answer those questions online, and they relayed that information to you on our behalf. I completed that survey. I'm typically un unable to attend your meetings because I have to work a second job. My pay rate has been frozen for seven of the 12 years that I have worked for Idle Statesville Schools. I have a son who's enrolled at NC State. Mr. Robertson would be happy because his major is construction engineering and management. His minor is in nonprofit studies. His goal is to build homes for people who usually can't afford a home of their own. You see, in our upbringing, we've been taught to do what we can to help others. Please. Don't mistake my absence for apathy, because that is not the case. I ask for your help. I ask that you do what you can to help with funding the education of Idle County children. I ask that you help offset the funding gaps created by recent and proposed budget cuts. We're already hearing about teaching assistants who, because of workforce reductions, will not be returning next year. Our students will suffer. We are a vital part of providing a safe and quality educational system for current and future residents of Idle County. Please work with the administration of Idle Statesville Schools to offset these cuts and supplement the state budget. The residents of Idle County and their children are counting on you. Hello, my name is Lisa Gill. I am not an employee of either school district other than the countless hours over the last seven years I've given for free to the Mooresville Graded School District because that's how much I love it. Um, Iredell County is in a unique situation. I personally think we're very lucky here that we have two high quality school districts. We don't just have one, we have two. We should be proud of this as a county. We shouldn't look at the schools as a burden that we're forced to bear. I've heard the legislators say in articles, whose schools are these? Well, honestly, I find that very frustrating because the bottom line is I can look around and I can tell you whose schools these are. They're all here and we vote and we matter and we want our voices heard. We need a bond. We need to improve the situation at our schools so that our schools are safe for our children. I understand that the commissioners have vowed to take on no new debt and to not raise taxes under the premise that we do not want to burden future generations, and I appreciate and understand that. Nobody is a fan of higher taxes. However, I do believe in my heart that most reasonable people recognize value, and our schools more than provide that value. 
by not supporting our schools and not allowing the voters to decide whether we are comfortable taking on this debt, whether we are comfortable paying a few extra dollars a month, the price of a grande latte at Starbucks, is literally what it comes down to. The burden we put on our children by not acting now is far worse than that, dollar, that few dollars a month. And frankly, I don't, look at, I don't look at the bond so much as debt. I look at it as an investment, investment in the future, the future of our kids. Futures of our kids, investment in our county, and that brings huge value many times over. I find it very hard to find any value in a new prison. The facts to me are simple, and maybe I'm a simple person, but quality schools and facilities are critical to economic development and growth throughout Iredell County and every other county in every other state in the United States. Ask any business leader here or anywhere, and they will tell you there is a direct correlation between quality schools, which bring in quality labor force, and economic development. We have some of the top schools in the state, yet are funded near the bottom of the 115 school districts in the state. And North Carolina is 49th out of 50 states in education funding, as you heard, some behind Mississippi. So clearly, our schools are funded at the lowest levels in the nation, and that's not acceptable. I know we can point fingers at Raleigh, we can point fingers at the Republicans in Raleigh or the Democrats in Washington and President Obama, but this is not the time to point fingers and blame people. Now, I have a personal affinity for Mooresville Graded School District for obvious reasons. It is one of the best school districts in the entire state, and if you read some of the publications, some are saying the best one in the country. It has recently been hailed as one of the very best in the nation and is being recognized as such through our Superintendent of the Year, Dr. Edwards. President Obama is coming to our schools. He is coming to the middle school. Now, I don't care if you didn't vote for him, if people here don't like him. The bottom line is a sitting president is coming to our schools to see how we do it. We are all extremely excited for his visit. And I just ask that you share in our excitement for our schools. I know we're running out of time, so I'll try and speed it up. Have any of you ever considered visiting our schools and seeing not only how we've risen to the top, but how the walls of, of the auditorium and the floors of the gymnasium are suffering serious structural damage? We have buildings that are functionally obsolete and downright unsafe in some cases. It will only get worse. So as great as the schools are, and as much value the education brings to our children and our futures, eventually it won't matter if the schools are crumbling around our ears. We are expecting significant growth, and our current facilities cannot, cannot accommodate that growth. The bottom line, though, to me, and again, maybe I am a simple person, Sometimes we just need to do things because they're morally the right things to do. <laughs> Putting a bond on the ballot and letting the voters, these folks here, decide to now, not later, is the right thing to do. I ask that you please use this as an opportunity to lead the way. Lead the way among the other counties in North Carolina, the other school districts, and lead the way to Raleigh and say you're not, it doesn't matter whose fault it is, we're going to be the ones to help fix it. And we're going to let the voters decide. Thank you. Okay, next we have Kurt Ballard. Taylor Whitesides and Skip McCall. If those folks should begin to move toward the front, please. Okay. 
Uh, hello, my name is Kirk Ballard, and I have lived in Mooresville for nearly 40 years. My wife has been a teacher at Mooresville Junior High for over 30 years. We have three daughters, and they have gone through the Mooresville system and have been a beneficiary of the laptop initiative. They've all grown up and gone now, and it's just she and I. But I stand before you not as a parent, but as the president of the Mooresville South Ardell Chamber of Commerce. We are comprised of over 800 businesses, and they employ tens of thousands of individuals. Those employers see education as a very important issue. When they look to attract qualified employees that have children, one of the things they look at are the school systems where their children would go to school. It is so important to our members that on May 22nd, the board of the Mooresville South Ardell Chamber of Commerce adopted a resolution encouraging the county commission to allow the citizens of Ardell County to vote this fall on a school bond referendum to address the facilities needs of the Ardell Statesville School System, the Mooresville Grade School District, and Mitchell Community College. They said providing safe and well-maintained schools for children of Ardell County is crucial to creating a learning environment that allows all of our children an opportunity to prepare themselves for the future. Our school systems are successful because the leadership in both systems have looked to new techniques and new tools in order to prepare the students for 21st century jobs. Now we need 21st century schools to go with those 21st century tools. That is why we recommend that you put it before the people a vote this fall for the school bond referendum. Good evening. My name is Taylor Rose Whiteside. I'm speaking to you tonight in memory of my uncle Woody Woodard because he believed in a quality education for all children, which also is guaranteed by the North Carolina State Constitution. As a rising fifth grader at East Iredale Elementary School, I am deeply concerned about me and my fellow students if we don't get what we deserve, and that is a quality education. A quality education is important for me and other students to pursue our dreams and grow up to become positive and productive citizens in our community. I have listened to and read about the debate over education funding in Iredell County. Most of the time, you adults debate and decide our future without including us, and I feel it's time, to, and I feel it's time you hear from the ones who will be affected the most, we the students. I am particularly concerned about how additional budget cuts will impact teacher assistance in our schools. The following facts will help you understand how important teacher assistants are to our education. Teacher assistants have more than enough to do already. Teachers have more than enough to do already. If it, it will make their jobs even more difficult if we lose additional teacher position, teacher assistant positions. Teacher assistants provide one-on-one -on -one time as extra help for teachers who have a difficult time understanding the lesson plans. Teacher assistants provide a vital service as bus drivers. Without them, many students would not have transportation to and from school. Teacher assistants provide fourth and fifth graders out of classroom prep for EOGs. Teacher assistants provide relief for the teachers to use the restroom, pick up information from the office and take care of other administrative duties and responsibilities. If there are disciplinary problems, the teacher assistant provides support and relief for the teachers to take corrective action and resolve the problems. As you can see, teachers, teacher assistants play a very important role in our education process. We have many good qualified teach, 
teachers in our schools, but they need their teacher assistance to give every child a fair opportunity to learn and get a quality education. I know as representatives in our community, you have a tough job, but there isn't anything more important than a good education. You probably look at it as just more expenses, but I look at it as an investment. If you will invest in us as students, then we will be better prepared to secure our future. And keep in mind, if Social Security still exists when I become an adult, we are the ones that will be paying your benefits. <laughs> Invest in us, and we will give you a great return in your investment. Empower the children of today because we are your future leaders and decision makers of tomorrow. Thank you for listening. I don't know if I want to uh, follow that or not. But it's a tough act to follow. My name is Skip McCall. Chairman Johnson, members of the Board of Commissioners, certainly thank you for the opportunity to address you this evening. However, before I get into my comments, I have to address what to me is an obvious problem here this evening. Certainly we have two of our commissioners that are not present tonight, and I'm sure they have legitimate reasons for not being here. But Chairman Johnson, as you mentioned in your opening prayer, that we are privileged to have uh, self-government. And certainly on an evening when we see our government at work and the citizens have an opportunity to participate in it, then I think that our elected representatives ought to be here to hear from the people. Also, it kind of, uh, it's obvious there's another problem to me, is that whatever business that will be conducted this evening will be conducted by three members of the Board of Commissioners. To me, in a county as large and as diverse as Iredell County, that is too few people to make decisions for so many people. We need a larger and more diverse board of commissioners. It feels like Groundhog Day to me because every year we come back and discuss and debate funding for education. This is deja vu all over again. We talk about who's responsible. Where does the responsibility lie? And certainly the county talks about it's the state's responsibility. The state talks about it's the federal responsibility. Everybody is pointing fingers. Certainly we do not elect our representatives to point fingers, but to solve problems. That's what you elected for, is to solve problem. When it comes to our children, we all are responsible. We talk about that it takes a whole village to raise a child. It takes a whole village to educate a child. And it is all of our responsibility to ensure that they get what the state constitution guarantees them. And as Taylor just mentioned, a quality education for all children. Certainly I commend the Ardell Statesville school system for the work that it has done. When we are one of the lowest funded systems in the state, and our state is 49th out of the 50 states of the United States in terms of funding, they have done a tremendous job with the resources that they have available. In, even in spite of the cuts that they have received over the past several years, 
They continue to do an exceptional job in educating our children, and my hat certainly goes off to them. In our Dale County State School system, better than 80% of our students are performing on grade level, which means that there's about 19.6% of students who are performing below grade level. And I raised the question of the morality. I know that there are some who think that those 19 uh, plus percent students who are performing below grade level, there are some people who think that that's okay and that's acceptable. But it is not acceptable. And when we talk about the 40 positions that we're going to lose of teacher assistants, then it's not just the 40 positions, but it's the hundreds of students that those teacher assistants can impact and certainly prepare them for a future that will make them productive and quality citizens in our community. We have a moral obligation to teach and educate each and every child in this community, regardless of their race, their gender, sexual preference orientation, or their wealth or lack of. We have a moral obligation, and as the representatives, we need to stand up and take and assume that moral obligation and responsibility to take care of all of our children. Certainly, we come here this evening. We do not come as high-paid lobbyists. We do not come as big corporations with deep pockets making astronomical campaign contributions. But we come here as average, everyday, hard-working citizens advocating for what is best for our children. And we request, we require, we actually demand that as county commissioners that you give us what we deserve, that you honor our privilege as American citizens to have what we feel is best for our children, and that you operate a government, not of big corporations, not of lo campaign lobbyists, but for the American citizens. And that is a government of the people, by the people, for the people. For the people have spoken this evening, and we ask that you honor our request. Grant us, grant us at least a vote. We deserve a vote. We came. A couple of years ago, we came asking for a penny. We asked the state to just maintain a penny sales tax, and they turned a deaf ear to our request. Now we're asking for only three-fourths of a cent, not even a penny, three-fourths of a cent to help provide our children what they are guaranteed by the state constitution. Grant us a vote on three-fourths cents of tax sales tax for the future of our children the future of our dear county, and certainly the future of this society and this community. Thank you so much for listening. I know you have a hard job, but grant us the tax request. We have uh, Jamie Conatillo, Teresa Satoris, and William M. Jones. Those folks will begin to move forward, please. My name is Jamie Conatillo, and I live in Mooresville, and I have two children who attend Lake Norman Elementary. I spoke two weeks ago at the county commissioner's meeting. Today is a bittersweet day for me. This morning I watched my son at his kindergarten celebration graduation. I promised myself I would not cry. Well, until the video came on, because that video will always get you. Wish I could have brought it tonight to show you some of the faces of our future. I'm sure there wouldn't be a dry eye in the house. I watched the teachers and teachers' assistants as they were so proud of the students giving their all, and I wondered how many would be let go once school ends. I now know we lost two TAs today. 
Two weeks ago, I tried to cram as many facts and details into my speech as possible, hoping to read it fast enough, covering everything without running out of time. Today, I'm not going to recite all the numbers again. It has all been said. You guys know what we are up against, and you know the schools need more funding. The question is, how do we get the funding, and is it a big enough priority to make it happen? I say it is. I would like to congratulate Mooresville Graded School District for their accomplishments and the fact that President Obama will be visiting with them on Thursday and recognizing them for their successful digital conversion and recognizing Superintendent Mark Edwards for his recent selection as National Superintendent of the Year. They are an example of what schools can be and just imagine what can be done with adequate funding. When hearing the news of the President's visit, I was happy for our town and the Mooresville Graded School District, but disappointed for the other schools in Mooresville and in our county in total. In light of tonight's meeting and the emotions we are all feeling, I will say the President's timing is off, to say the least. I do wonder that while the President is visiting Mooresville Graded Schools on Thursday, how many teachers and staff members will be thinking about all of the questions we would like to ask him and hoping for a good answer, like, is my job safe and is it valued? Want to come toward the high school where our gym floor is collapsing and our auditorium has rainwater issues? Who's going to fund these facility needs? And here we are on the other side of Mooresville, where our schools are. Um, same town, just a different zip code, wondering if the President's even aware of this meeting tonight or what we are here fighting for. We are fighting for funding to keep our schools running. Jobs of hard-working Americans are on the line, not to mention our children's education, future, and the safety of them. Our schools are in need of full-time nurses. Teachers' assistants currently take sick children to the office when a need arises. Without the TAs we need, who will manage this task now? A teacher cannot leave her class alone to run kids to the office while our receptionist takes temperatures, handles, cuts, scrapes, vomiting, etc., and her job responsibilities at the same time. We do not have a full-time nurse. Also, kids with life-threatening food allergies are on the rise, and my son is one of those children. I am a huge advocate for stocking schools with EpiPens and having full-time nurses on staff. With reduced staff and increased headcount per class, I pray there is never a situation where a teacher is overwhelmed and a student goes into anaphylactic shock and the unthinkable happens because we are short-staffed and there is no nurse on staff. We are represented today by several different generations, and I think we can all agree that times are not what they used to be, and nothing cost what it used to. Unfortunately, there have been state and federal cuts to our education funding, and right here, right now, there is nothing that we can do about that. But right here, right now, I can urge you to restore the 15% in local funding costs we have seen, I'm sorry, local funding cuts we have seen over the last four years. Please raise our sales tax rate by a quarter cent. In all honesty, raise it by a half a cent if it means we can keep our teachers, teacher's assistants, and the staff we desperately need. I feel the same way about raising property taxes. I lived in Mecklenburg County for 10 years. That situation is terrible. At their meeting the other night, they're looking to raise them again. We can stand an increase, a small one, while remaining a conservative community. If you are here tonight to to support increased funding for education, I ask that you please stand up. Now remain standing if you are in favor of an increased sales tax and or an increased property tax. I think that speaks for itself. Thank you. You may be seated. Mooresville is a great community. Over the past year and a half, I have watched our community come together time and time again to help those in need, like when a fifth grader was diagnosed with Burkitt's lymphoma and needed extreme and immediate care to give him a chance at life. When a husband and father of three elementary aged children was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer at the age of 40 and lost his battle shortly thereafter. His wife is here tonight. This is Charlene Selman. She lives off of Social Security. Her husband, there's no money left behind, and she will pay increased property taxes for her three elementary age children. I 
And also last summer, a North Carolina National Guardsman who was a dear friend, a husband, and father of two, he lost his life while serving our country, battling wildfires in South Dakota. This is the kind of community that I want to live in. One that stands behind other people. But what, <laughs> but what kind of community are we if we don't stand behind our children? What lesson are we teaching them? I will leave you with two thoughts. When there is something we can do, we cannot live in a world of denial. And a partial quote from Superintendent Mark Edwards, we need to prepare students for their future, not our past. Thank you. Taurus. Mr. William Jones. I saw him here earlier. There he is. God is good. God is real. And God is love. Commissioner Johnson, Commissioner Norman, Commissioner Boone. Thanks for allowing me the opportunity to uh, say a few words. Uh, my name is William M. Jones, Jr., and I am your retired postmaster here in Statesville for probably over 10 or 12 years. I'm a community activist, and I'm presently serving as Statesville NAACP Branch Number 5454. And uh, Commissioner Johnson, I, I try very hard not to repeat or say anything that has already been said. And uh, I hate being last. I should be used to it. <laughs> but it's still very difficult to follow what has been said. But uh, w when I retired as, as postmaster, I wanted to leave and go back to Greensboro and be with my family. And I asked my wife, are you ready to go? And she said, why leave? This community has been very good to you. They have completed sending your, our kids to college, and let's stay and give back. So that's what uh, I have tried to do for the last 10 years, is to give back to this community. One of the efforts we have shared was uh, the seven kids that got killed, and we needed a Boys and Girls Club. This community got it together and they built a Boys and Girls Club. You got 300 kids that's not on the street. They're over there in the Boys and Girls Club. You can go over there and visit them anytime. We had people sleeping under the bridge, homeless. They just drop them off in our county. We needed a shelter. The community came together and built a Fifth Street shelter. They don't only put them to bed, they give them, they train them, they give them an opportunity and try to get them a job and make them productive. Now is the school time. I was hearing about budget cuts and, and I know that a good education is the backbone to a good community. And we kept hearing about it. I said, we got to do something. So I asked Superintendent Johnson to come and speak to the NAACP branch. He did. And we decided to have a community forum and let the community ask questions. And we did that. And one of the things that came out of the conversation that was very disturbing was the TA position that was going to be cut. And I'm here to speak for people that can't speak for themselves. Please help these people. Suggestions has been made how we can remedy this problem. And I'm asking you to give this community an opportunity to help you. 
Because any time you improve the quality of life, everybody benefits. Any time you hurt the quality of life, it hurts all of us. We are our brother's keeper. Please give us a chance to help you. Thank you. Next, we'll have Lena Grady, LaRue Berlay, and Jennifer McGuire. Those folks should begin to come forward, please. Good evening. Thank you, commissioners, for giving us the opportunity to speak. My name is Lena Grady. I'm a native of Statesville, North Carolina. Um, attended Chestnut Grove School, Morningside, and, and a graduate of Statesville in 1972. I'm a grandmother, and I salute the teachers and the TAs. They do an outstanding job. You have to have the patience of Job, the wisdom of Solomon to do what they do. And it, <laughs> and it just bothers me that you would cut their positions, who would do their jobs? Have you thought much about that? That's all I have to say. My name is LaRue Miller Burley. I'm a resident of Ardell County and a middle-class property owner. And as you can tell, I'm a senior citizen also <laughs> who lives on a fixed income. Uh, tonight, when I walked in, the gentleman asked me, he says, would you like to speak tonight? And I says, no, no, I'm not a public speaker. And I'm not. But after I sat there and thought a while, I thought, I do have something to say, and I want you to listen. Uh, I don't have any statistics. I can't quote any records or anything else. But I'd like for you to know that the children of Ardell County, especially in the Morrisville Graded School District, have a very, very special place in my heart. The Morrisville schools I have been associated with for a long time. Believe it or not, my dad graduated from Mooresville Central High School in 1926, and 32 years later, I graduated in the same building. <laughs> uh, my first child started school in 1966, and I still have daughters that are going to school today. I have two great-granddaughters that my husband and I have adopted, and one is in the third grade at Parkview Elementary School. One is in the fourth grade at EMIS. When my children were coming up, I didn't get to volunteer and help like I wanted to because I had to work. I have volunteered, though, in the past with my grandchildren at Shepherds Elementary and at Stageville Middle School, where I'm very proud I was volunteer of the year in the mid <laughs> Brady Johnson was the principal at uh, Statesville Middle School. As you know, he was the, or he is the uh, superintendent of the Idle Statesville Schools. And he took me to a very nice luncheon at the Statesville Country Club. <laughs> so I, I have been very involved with the schools. For the past five years, I've been a uh, volunteer at Parkview Elementary School. And this year, I volunteered on Tuesday mornings at Parkview and Tuesday afternoons at EMIS. I saw a lot of things that the teachers have to deal with, struggles and demands that are made on them daily. A lot of us, if you're not involved directly in the schools, you don't know what all these teachers and these assistants have to go through. <laughs> Now, 
One of the things I would like to bring to your attention is that my beloved Parkview School doesn't have an adequate facility for any kind of a, a meeting like uh, a PTO meeting or a PTO uh, function. Uh, and you know, the PTOs are so important to our schools. They, <laughs> they function and they provide so many things that our budgets can't cover. Those PTO volunteers and the parents, they get together and we get part of what we need because of their hard efforts. Uh, one of the things that the PTO does is they involve all the parents that can, but they also involve the community. And the community needs to be aware of, of some of these things. Uh, we, I did not know that the gym floor at the high school was unsafe. I don't have any kids at the high school. I did not know that the auditorium was not safe, but I should have known because my class of 1958 was the last class that graduated from the old Central High building. The next year that auditorium was there, I think. So it's been there a long time too. <laughs> I would like to urge the commissioners to let the general public help you with the decisions that you have to make. Uh, I have one comment I'd like to share with you. Uh, it was a pastor talking to his congregation about a building project. And I think this is similar to what we're going through at Mooresville and Idle Statesville as well. We got the money, that's the good news. We've got the money, we can do this. Yeah. The bad news is, it's still in our pockets. <laughs> and we need to get it out. Hello. My name is Jennifer McGuire. Um, I am a mother of four students in the Mooresville Graded School District. I want to first of all thank you for hearing us tonight. It really does mean a lot to be here. I would like to just start with a resounding, please do what is right for education in this county. I am asking, I am asking you to be the leaders in this state of North Carolina, because obviously this state and our country has some problems in education. You have the chance to be leaders in this state and do what is right for education in this, in this county right here. I could quote all the numbers and all the stats. We've all heard them. We all know them. I don't, I don't need to do that. I will say, Everybody, we know them. We need to keep the quality teachers, staff members, leaders here in our county. And I'm afraid that's not going to happen. We're going to end up losing the teachers that we have um, because they're going to go find some greener pastures elsewhere. And we have two outstanding school districts in this county we need to step up to the plate. We really do. When we lose our quality staff members, we're all going to suffer, but mostly it's the students who are going to suffer. And I feel that in the end, when these same students move on to their higher education, I, I'm a mother of a high schooler, and we are starting to look at uh, colleges and universities, when she goes and gets her education, is she going to return to Iredale County to live, to get married, to work, and raise her family if this county doesn't have anything to offer her someday? I wonder. It's not going to happen. And, and we all know that businesses, they look for quality education in communities. So... If we allow that to suffer, then we know that it's going to suffer business-wise. And businesses are not going to want to come here. 
if, because nobody's going to want to live here and move here. We need to care about the growth of this county, about business that comes to this county. And I think we all know, I know everyone here, and I, I know that you know as well, education is a huge part of that puzzle. It is a big piece, a big component. And we need to continue with outstanding education in our county so that our county can continue to thrive. Whether this is a tax increase, um, sales tax, property tax, I am 100% behind a bond referendum so that we can offer safe schools for our children to attend. Like I said, I have four students, beautiful children in the school district. Last year I was in four separate different schools. Most everybody in all those schools n know me because I'm very visible in all those schools. I do not work for the district. I do a whole lot of volunteering in a lot of capacities. I am willing to put that time in, not only for my children, but to help all kinds of kids. So I will do private reading and tutoring and PTO, just craziness, to help all of the students at our schools. You, you, you need to do the right thing and let the voters decide. You really do. I just really want to end with um, a thought from a famous Wake Forest University professor, Dr. Maya Angelou, one of my most favorite authors, in regards to education. She says, when we know better, we do better. And the bottom line is, I know that we all know, so we must do better. Thank you. We have two more people signed up this evening. I believe the Sean Brennan and John Ong. Good evening. It's been a long night, and I tell you, just some absolutely great comments tonight, uh, possibly with the exception of one, but just some great comments tonight. Um, folks, I, just, just a, a couple of things, and again, number one, I appreciate you folks being here and listening. That's the most important thing. Um, I have two children. Uh, one graduated Mooresville graded high school last year, and the other one's in the seventh grade. And last year at graduation, uh, when we were in the auditorium, working our way toward the auditorium, actually, I noticed a monument in, in front of the main high school. And the monument in concrete had an inscription in it. It was 1906. So this nice young lady that just spoke a little while ago that was there in 1926, or her dad was there and she was there in 55, the building was kind of antiquated then. Now, the gym was built probably a little bit afterwards, but folks, we need some help. It's very unsafe. We don't want a lot of kids in there, parents in there, whatever, and struggling with the rainwater and everything else that's going on. It's very unsafe. We need your help. Seven years ago, I had an opportunity. My, my company asked that I relocate to the southeast. Live in a great town in Arizona, and the reason we lived there was because of education. So we started doing our research, and we had a choice seven years ago. Where do we move? We didn't come to the southeast for weather. We didn't come to the southeast for housing. We didn't come to the southeast for education. We came here, I'm sorry, for entertainment. We came to Mooresville for the education for our children. That was our choice. Mooresville Graded School District and also the, the Iredale School District, two outstanding districts. We moved to Mooresville. We're so pleased. But we need to continue. You folks have a choice. We need to continue to do the right thing. And I'm asking you, and I think everybody here, if you'd stand up, are you guys asking the same thing? We need a choice. We need a choice, and please help us help our kids. If not, we'll put our heads on our pillow every night and learn to spell Mississippi. Okay? Let's not do that. Thank you. My name is John Ong, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak. 
I'm a father of two children who've spent their entire academic career in Iredell Statesville schools uh, from the kindergarten all the way up, one of whom is just graduating this week from uh, South Iredell High School, and uh, both of them are members of the IB program. What I'd like to say is that this is a school district, I'm pleased to say, that when it's given resources, they run with it. There may be school districts in other counties or other cities or other states that may not. That's not the issue here. The level of funding is well known. It's too low. The IB program is a good example of what happens when adequate funding is provided. The kids in that program have done terrifically well with wonderful teachers, the support of the school, and the rest of the students at South Iredell have also done remarkable things this year. And it's a community that's built. It's a community based on education. I don't believe there are any gifts more valuable to a young person than education. The education I was afforded has given me opportunities throughout my life. We should give the same opportunities to every student who wants to run with it. All I would ask at the end of the day is a simple question. Does Iredo County value education? If it does, act accordingly. I think it does. I hope it does. And when I look at my kids, I know it does. And they do. And we demand that the county and its leaders value education. Thank you. That's everyone that we have signed up for this evening. This time we'll declare the public hearing closed and if there's any commissioner who would like to address, make any address to the crowd, feel free to do so. <laughs> I guess not. This time we'll take a 15 minute recess and uh, We'll be in recess for 15 minutes to come back and complete our agenda.
Okay, folks. Wait for our lawyer to get back over here. While we're waiting, I, wanna, I don't know if anybody in this room other than the folks up here are aware of it, but I'll tell you, a gentleman that uh, made a great sacrifice to be here tonight is our Vice Chairman Marvin Norman. He has been in and out of the hospital, and he's been sick. And folks, these lights are hotter than blazes up here. You can get a suntan some nights. And uh, it was a struggle for Marvin to sit through two hours up here uh, with the illness he has, and he's to be commended for that. And uh, I got a great deal of respect for him. For that. That's his thing. Second your remarks, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. All right. That brings us to administrative matters. And the first, I need to reorient myself here. The first is a request for the reappointment of the Iredell County Tax Collector. And uh, the term for Tax Collector Bill Furtis expires June 30 of this year. The Board of Commissioners may determine the, the uh, term of office. And uh, previously, we've chosen to give him a four-year term. I believe we can do for any time up to four years. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. So the floor is open for discussion and nomination. Motion to reappoint Bill Furcher for four years. Mr. Okay. Chairman. Motion for vice, from Vice Chairman Norman to reappoint Mr. Furgis for four years. All in favor of that, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. That brings us to the point that Mr. Fergus is going to need some backup over there. So we have a request for the reappointments of Iredell County Deputy Tax Collectors. And the request is that we appoint Linda Mara, Ann Gray Ray, Shannon Lester, and Kelly Gibson. The request is for a four-year term. I believe, again, that's up to our pleasure, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Motion to approve. All right. You want to appoint each one of these folks for four years? Okay. Vice Chairman Norman offers a motion we reappoint Linda Mara, Ann Gray Ray, Shannon Lester, and Kelly Campbell as deputy tax collectors for the next four years beginning June, uh, July 1. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. We have a request for approval of the May 16th, 21st, and 23rd 5 p.m. budget session of 2013 minutes. Are there any comments, corrections? No. I move we approve the minutes for the May 16th, May 21st, and May 23rd 5 p.m. budget session minutes. Okay. We have a motion for approval from Commissioner Boone. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. The next item we have is uh, a proclamation recognizing the achievements of Judge Robert Collier and during his term on the DOT board. I was asked to present this by the Rotary Club and it's to be presented to him on June 18th, I believe. And uh, I won't go through reading it, but uh, we certainly appreciate it appreciative of uh, Judge Collier's work that he did for all of Iredale County during his tenure there. So I would move that we adopt this proclamation and authorize me to present it to him on June 18. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Mr. Smith, I didn't mean to take over your job there, but I figure with those two appointments I'd just keep moving. It's been a long night. Okay. And that brings us to appointments to, we have no announcements that I'm aware of of vacancies. Uh, I'll save that for a minute. That brings us to appointments to boards and commissions. And the first one is the Social Service Board. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I nominate Ms. Cheryl Lucas. Cheryl Lucas. Are there any other nominations?
Hearing none, is there a motion to close the floor to nominations? So moved. And appoint Ms. Lucas by acclamation. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. This time we have three appointments to the planning board. Terms for Eric Fields, Jerry Santoni, and Thomas Stevens expire on June 30. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have one question. I'm sure, you know, Mr. Ammon uh, has been recommended. I'm sure he would be a good member, but my recollection is we just appointed him to the Board of Adjustment at our last meeting, and he can't serve on both boards, I don't think. So. Yeah, I think you're right. Well, maybe postpone this till we can find out. I mean, his, his appointment. Yeah. Well, I, I was just going to say that uh, there would be potential conflicts between those two boards and the interpretation of policies and things of that nature. Maybe we'd, I'd nominate Mr. Santoni. He okay. wishes to serve again, but maybe we better. All right. Any other nominations? I move we close the floor to nominations at this time and appoint Mr. Santoni. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. I, I just like to comment, Mr. Chairman, that Mr. Eric Fields, I noticed, is retiring. He has been a member of that board for a long time. A long time, probably over twenty years, and has served as chairman a good bit of that time. So he certainly needs to be recognized for all of his years of dedicated service to the counties. Mr. Norman knows he used to be on that board. That's not always an yeah. easy job, an easy board to serve on. He certainly deserves to be commended for his service. Okay. All right. Fire Tax District Board. Uh, I move we postpone this until our next meeting. Okay, we have a motion for Commissioner Boone to postpone this appointment. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. That brings us to the Juvenile Crime Prevention Council. We have 16 appointments. I noticed on some of these we have a choice of either one or two. Uh huh. So I'm not sure how we're really supposed to proceed on that. Sir, I believe they're all appointed and they just, uh, if one can't fill in, the other. Oh, takes okay. Their place. Okay. 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 I understand. Floor's open for nominations. I would move that we appoint Dr. Mark Edwards and Bill Parker or Steve Mooney as his designees if he's unable to attend and school superintendent designee. Dr. Ron Hargrave or Steve Hampton is his designee. And that we appoint uh, Carl Robbins or Joe Cook. Sheriff designee would be Bill Hamby. District attorney would be Kerry Nitsu. Nitsu. Mental Sorry, health Bob, director Bob designee, Bob. Candace Moore. DSS director designee, Angela Williams. County Manager Designee, Susan Blumenstein. County Commissioner, Marvin Norman. Chief District Judge Designee, Judge Deborah Brown. Local Health Director Designee, <coughs> Laura Williard. County Commissioner Appointee, Jim Mixon. And County Commissioner Appointee, Jennifer Okonski. I would move that uh, we appoint those folks and that we close the floor to nominations and appoint these folks by acclamation. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. That brings us to the Central Workforce Development Board. We have two appointments. Floor is open for nominations. Motion to nominate Jan Combe and Brenda Speech. Okay. Any other nominations? I would move, uh, we close the floor to nominations and point Jan Comer and Brenda Speece by acclamation. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Morsel Planning Board, ETJ. Uh, nominate John Robertson. Okay. Any other nominations? If 
not, I move we close the Florida nominations and appoint Mr. Robertson by acclamation. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Troutman Planning Board ETJ. Nominate Mr. Leighton Gensinger. Okay. Any other nominations? Hearing none, I move we close the Florida nomination. Point Leighton Gensinger by acclamation. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Troutman Board of Adjustment, ETJ. One appointment. Motion to nominate Helen Byers. I have a motion to nominate Ms. Helen Byers. Any other nominations? Hearing none, I move to close the floor to nominations. Point Ms. Byers by acclamation. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. The Recreation Advisory Board, we have one appointment. Are there any nominations? If not, I'd move we close, we postpone this uh, appointment to our next meeting. All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. All opposed, motion carries unanimously. We have the local emergency planning committee, one appointment. Nominate Susan Carter. Okay, any other nominations? If not, I move to we close the floor to nominations, appoint Susan Cartner by acclamation. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? On our reminder list this evening, the Personnel Advisory Committee. We have a vacancy on there. At this point, I would like to nominate Ms. Barbara Davidson. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, I move to close the floor to nominations and appoint Ms. Davidson by acclamation. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Is there any unfinished business to come to our attention? Public comment period. That's the second meeting of that. Any new business? County manager's report. Mr. Chairman, I have two quick things. Uh, the first is just an update on the, um, the, the search for an animal services director and uh, the tax assessor's positions. Uh, we're still working on those. Uh, we went through one round of interviews. Um, we're prepared to do another round. Uh, did not feel like we had a good candidate. And um, just wanted to let you know that we are working on that, um, just as an update. Second is I'm going to hand out a draft budget ordinance for your review prior to our next meeting. Wanted to get this to you in, in plenty of time that you can go through it uh, in uh, anticipation of the presentation at the June 18th meeting. And that's all I have. Can I, can I bring up one point I guess is permissible. I meant to do this under new business. I spoke with our county manager earlier this evening about this. I wanted to make the board aware of my intent and the reason for it. If it's agreeable to the board, I've asked the county manager that any time there's additional expense associated with housing prisoners outside of our downtown facility, if we incur any additional ongoing expense that when when he brings that forward in his county manager's report or makes us aware of it, that he give a report as to what is the total annualized figure for maintaining and housing whatever those prisoners outside of our downtown facility, just so that we can monitor that, that, that be incorporated into his county manager's reports. So I've requested that. I don't think it takes board action, but I, I wanted to make you aware of it. I think that would be a good idea. Okay. We don't have a closed session that I'm aware of this evening. So the floor is open for a motion for adjournment. So moved. All right. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? 
Motion carries unanimously.